everyone, let's read chapter 25, which is called The Candy Cane. William and the Christmasaurus flew higher and higher into the sky. It was the most glorious feeling either of them had ever felt. It was hands down, heads and shoulders, unquestionably, without a doubt, the best, most awesomely cool night of both their lives, by miles. There had been so much excitement and commotion that William suddenly felt completely exhausted. His power bar had hit zero, batteries drained. He was safe now, flying behind the Christmasaurus, and the warm, magical feeling inside him made him feel so sleepy. Before he knew it, he was snoring away happily, 20,000 feet in the air, while the Christmasaurus flew on into the night. William woke up suddenly as a blast of bright light exploded out of nowhere. How long had he been asleep? It only felt like minutes. He looked over the side of his wheelchair and saw that they were no longer flying over the streets and houses of William's town at the edge of the city. They were over pure, white, snowy mountains. He must have been asleep for hours. As the fresh, snowy air chilled his cheeks, William tucked his hand inside the sleeves of his thin dressing gown, wishing he was wearing a little more than his dinosaur pyjamas. Flash! There it was again. A vibrant explosion of greeny blue light illuminated the entire sky. The Northern Lights! The Christmasaurus let out a happy roar of excitement. He was almost home. He suddenly started climbing steeper and steeper until they were completely vertical, facing the moon. What are you doing? cried William, clinging on for dear life as the Christmasaurus kept flying up and up and up. Luckily, William had had that seatbelt installed in his chair. He quickly tightened the buckle just in time as the Christmasaurus flew an enormous loop the loop dancing through the northern lights. As scared as William was, he couldn't help but give in to temptation. And whilst he was upside down, he reached out his hand and dipped it into the wonderful dancing colours in the sky. William's dinosaur pilot performed some more daring acrobatics, loop, loopy twists and twisty loops. And when they were finally back up the right way, William was a little sick over the side of his chair. Unbeknown to him, it landed on the roof of an elf's house. The Christmasaurus made a little scoffing sound. It's not funny, William said, nearly throwing up again as the Christmasaurus started descending on the gigantic mountains below. He weaved gracefully in and out of the cracks of the cliffs until the mountains cleared in front of them and all William could see was an infinite sea of pure white snow. The Christmasaurus landed with a little bump, which for his first landing wasn't a bad effort. Years of watching the reindeer had definitely paid off. They came to a sudden stop in the middle of the stark white nothing. William looked around him and saw absolutely zilch. He did a 360 degree scan and confirmed that they had flown all the way to nowhere. But for some strange reason, the Christmasaurus looked wonderfully happy. He was jumping up and down, wagging his tail like a puppy, letting out all sorts of strange roars that William hadn't heard before. He certainly didn't seem to be lost. In fact, the Christmasaurus seemed to be exactly where he wanted to be. Um, excuse me, Christmasaurus, but where are we? William asked. The dinosaur suddenly stopped. He looked at William as if he had gone completely balmy. He roared a little chirpy roar, wiggled his head around and gestured for William to open his eyes, as if he were missing something incredibly obvious. There's nothing here, said William truthfully. He couldn't see anything at all. The Christmasaurus shook his head with utter bewilderment, as though William had said something absolutely potty. As William watched, the dinosaur suddenly seemed to become all flustered and frustrated and tried to wriggle himself free from the fairy lights that were tangled around his body. William wheeled closer and helped unloop the things he'd been using as reins all night. But just as he pulled the very last loop of lights over the Christmasaurus' head, something unthinkable happened. Pop! The Christmasaurus disappeared! Just like that, in the wink of a blink of an eye. One moment he was right there, a few millimetres from William's face. The next, he was gone. William looked around. Was this some kind of trick? Hello, he called, but his voice drifted on the frozen wind into the distant nothingness. There was only snow as far as his eyes could see. He was sitting in his wheelchair, holding the string of unlit fairy lights, suddenly feeling very lonely and a little bit scared. All of a sudden, a gust of wind whooshed past and William thought he heard whispers. He couldn't make out exactly what they said, though. It was more noises than words. Is anyone there? 
Christmasaurus, he called. The breeze blew past again and he heard the same whispers. He quickly searched all around. Weirdly, William no longer felt alone. Even though all he could see was emptiness for miles and miles, he suddenly felt like he was being watched again. Pop! William heard something. He used his hand to shield his eyes from the falling snow, but still only saw long, empty fields of white all the way to the distant mountains. Then something caught his eye. There was something there after all. Something small, sticking out of the snow a few metres away from him. He wheeled himself over and pulled out a shiny, delicious-looking red and white candy cane from the snow. He was sure it hadn't been there before. He examined the yummy, sugary cane. It looked exactly like the sort of candy cane you might hang on your Christmas tree, except it was perhaps a tiny bit larger and heavier. And somehow more scrummy looking. As he turned it round in his hands, he noticed something. On the flat circular bottom of the candy cane, there was a very small but very neat writing, like the writing that runs through the centre of a stick of rock you sometimes get at the seaside. The tiny perfect writing said, William Trundle. William was stunned. How on earth was his name written in this oddly beautiful candy cane? Was he supposed to eat it? William looked around at the forever emptiness and decided that he had nothing to lose. So he put the candy cane in his mouth and bit off a chunk. Pop! As he bit down, the most spectacularly magical thing happened. He didn't disappear like the Christmasaurus had. Quite the opposite, that in fact. Everything else appeared. And by everything, I mean everything. Suddenly, William was sitting at the entrance of an enormous wooden building. It was the North Pole Snow Ranch. He couldn't believe how grand it was. Its impressiveness reminded him of the museum. As he marvelled at the twisty turrets, the puffing chimneys, the toboggan run path and the snowflake door knocker, his mouth dropped open with wonder. It was just like his dad's stories. Then he noticed the animals, except they weren't animals, they were more like creatures magical creatures. There were small ones with wings whizzing overhead, trailing silvery dust behind them. There were snowmen in the distance, figure skating on a large frozen pool, for performing fantastic swirls and twirls, and occasionally pausing to pick up a carrot or piece of coal that lost in the process. Most of all, he noticed the small, jittery little creatures that were now surrounding his wheelchair, as the Christmasaurus happily greeted them with sloppy licks and tail swishes. Even though William had never seen one before, he knew at once what these small creatures were. Elves. Hello, elves, he said. The elves all backed off and dived for cover, slightly scared of William. Then one by one they popped back out, looking frightened and cross, before all of a sudden they started singing. You can't see that very well. There we go. It's the Candy Cane Mountain and the Christmasaurus and William. So now William can see all of the North Pole. And remember, elves only speak in rhyme. A child is here, a child, it's true. Oh, what are we poor elves to do? We could not leave him there for freeze. He'd heard our whispers on the breeze. And so we made a candy cane personalised with his name. So when that cane was licked and tasted, this boy was evaporated through the void of time and space and brought here to this magic place. We've never done what we just did. Now what should we do with this kid? He's seen our secret hiding spot. Everything has gone to pot. What will Santa think and say? He'll be here soon, he's on the way. He'll land here in that great red sleigh and say, boy, you must go away. He'll be just as cross and grumpy as he is fat and round and lumpy. These things we say for you to hear, but if you don't believe your ears, then turn around, move out the way. Santa's back, hip, hip, hooray. The next chapter is called, is chapter 26. It's called Santa Returns. And we'll have to wait until we're back in school to read that. So William has just discovered the North Pole. He's the first little boy to ever go to the North Pole. And I can't wait to read it with you when we're back in school and find out what happens in the North Pole. I hope you all have a lovely Christmas and I'll see you soon. Bye.